Hi there, I'm Professor E. And I'm DJ Schurz. Welcome to the Robot Program. In this episode, we're going to show you how you can teach your robot to recognize multiple colors. So how are we going to get started? Well, we're going to use JD for this example. Of course, this will apply to 6 and roll A. Great. Okay, so we're going to turn our JD on, freshly charged of course, and lie him down. And on our computer, we're going to load up Easy Builder. We'll skip going to the robot school. And then we're going to connect to our Wi-Fi network for the robot. Now we're going to load the example project, the bear example projects for these robots. So if you have six, load the six bear project. If you have Rolly, load Rolly bear project. And of course, we're going to load the JD bear project. And the bear project just gives you a nice clean workspace to start from. And now we'll connect to the robot and watch out. Boom! Hello, JD. Now I always like to start out these episodes by getting JD to stand up. All on his own. All on his own. Well, hello there, JD. Okay, so because we're going to need the robot to see, we have to add the camera control to the project. So we're going to choose Project, Add, and select Camera, and choose Camera Device. Now press the Start button. And hey, say hello to Andreas. Hello, Andreas. Now, we're going to turn the robot around so that we can teach the robot the particular colors we're going to use. And I happen to have a few colors here. OK. My colors are a green frog. Green frog, OK. And a pink duck. Pink duck. That's right. OK. Well, yellow and pink. But we're going to use the We're going to use the color. pink side. OK. Yeah. OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to first use the green. And we're going to hold it up so you can see the robot is seeing what I see in here. Now, multicolor, this tab here, allows you to specify your own custom colors. So I'm going to choose the edit button. And I'm going to give this color a name. And I'm going to call it green frog. And now you see this color wheel. This color wheel is going to allow me to do is isolate a specific color that I only want to be recognized. Okay, so what I'm actually doing here is if you can see this one, I'm backing it off until the green starts to go away. The object I'm trying to detect goes away. And I bring it back just a little bit more. I do the same with the other side. I go all the way till it disappears and I back it off a little bit. So we're seeing a little bit of extra because the green of your shirt yep. is almost the exact same green as the frog. And you're also seeing a bunch of white dots because white contains a little bit of all colors. So we can remove those now with these slide dials here. So saturation, we're going to increase the minimal saturation until the, until the object disappears and bring it back. And do the same with the maximum. We're bringing it all the way down to the object disappears and bring it back. Okay, so we're starting to clean up the image a little bit. And you see there's a lot of noise there. Mm -hmm. That noise is going to be the luminance. So those are the white dots that I was just talking about. So I'll increase the luminance value until the object goes away. And I'll do the same with the maximum. I'll bring that down until the object goes away. You see different angles, sometimes it doesn't see it. That means we might have to adjust the luminance a little bit more. Or even a color here. Because we told it a very specific range of what we want it to actually look at. That's right. So we're just going to fine tune here until we just get it right. And it looks like we got it. Looks pretty good. Now, it will does. the light shining on the frog impact what the robot is seeing? Yeah, you are going to see a little bit of different color variants because the light just is reflecting. Okay, so we're going to, of course, put that guy down, and let's do that with our next object, which is the pink guy here. So we're going to choose Add to add a new color, mm -hmm. and we're going to choose the Edit button, and this one is going to be Pink Duck. Okay, so we'll do the same thing here. I'll run through this one a little bit quicker. All right, so now you can see that we got our object being recognized. So let's choose the Save button, and we'll go into Tracking, and we'll turn on the multicolor tracking. And you have both colors enabled right now. So I it'll do. look for both. You bet. So now I can hold this up, and you can see it's putting a box around what it recognizes. And I'll do the next frog here, and he's been recognized as well. And our tracking value down in the corner Shows us that he's tracking something. You got it. So now we want the robot to speak and say what it is that he's seen. So we can click on the gear button here to bring up the script editor. And tracking start loads up. So we'll click on the pencil icon here. 
and close. And now what we're going to do, we're going to use our Blockly interface. We're going to have the robot speak what it's actually detected. So what I'll do is I'll choose the audio tab, and I'll choose Say Easy B, and I'm going to go text, and I'm going to say create text with. This is going to append two pieces of text together. So I'll choose text, and I'll type in I C A, and I'll hit space because we're going to append the variable at the end. We don't want it to be one word. And we'll choose variables, and we'll choose the item for the variable. Now, in this list are all the different variables that are currently in the system. The one we care about is camera object color, because that's stored in the current color that the object, that the camera is detecting. So when I hold up this green frog, let's see what JD says. Okay. I see a green frog. Hey, okay. that's pretty good. And let's try the pink duck. Good, all right. Very excellent. Okay, so now what we could do is we can make JD actually move his head to track the objects as well. Okay, so he's going to follow them as they move throughout yes. the screen. Now, Six doesn't have the ability to move his head, so you're not going to be able to do this exercise with Six. However, you can do it with Roll E. It's because JD's head can move, and so with Roll E's head, uh, we can actually have it track the object using the servos. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the gear button on the camera control. And you see here there's a button that says Servo Tracking. Well, we can check that. That means whenever it detects an object, it's going to use the servo to track that object. But it doesn't know what servos to use yet. So what we're going to do is we've got these buttons here for X-axis servo and Y-axis servo. Well, X-axis is the horizontal. That's looking left and right. And Y-axis is looking up and down. So we're going to do the X-axis first. We're going to click on the NA button here. And we're going to choose the port that the servo for horizontal is connected to. And we can look over here on the right, and we can see that it's actually labeled as horizontal D0. So we just select D0. So you just follow what it says there. You bet. Now I can specify the minimum position we want the robot to look. So I'll move the servo. In this case, we can go maybe right about there. So that's the farthest he'll look that direction. And then the farthest he'll look this direction, say right about there. Now we're going to do the y-axis, which is looking up and down. So we'll click port on the y-axis, and we have here vertical servo, which is D1. So we'll choose D1, and now we can move his head minimal value. So you can see his head is looking up, which you might think it might look down for minimal, but that's not the way his servos are set up. So we're going to look about there, and you don't want the servos to be grinding. And now we're going to move his maximum position there. Now I'll push save. Now let's put the object in front of the robot, and he'll detect it. Now you see when he looks, when I hold the, the frog on the top of the screen, you see how he's looking down every time? Mm -hmm. It's because, remember we configured the servo, the minimal position moves back and the maximum position moves forward? Well, we actually tell, have to tell the computer now to invert the direction. So we push this checkbox here to invert the direction of the servo for y-axis. So now when I hold the robot or the object at the top of the screen here, he'll start looking up at it. All right, now up is up and down is down. You got it. So now he can track the object like this. Now in certain, <laughs> certain brightnesses, especially here in the studio where we have so many different colors, it's hard for him to be able to focus on that color. So if we have to go back in, we can click on multicolor and we can edit that color. And there we go, we just had to bring it down a little bit. Now it can be seen again. So now he could track the green frog. There you go. So on your screen, you can see how the light is changing the way that the frog reflects. And of course, as he's picking it up and, and detecting and not detecting, he keeps speaking over and over again. So now we're going to control his servo to move up and down on his shoulder to point to where the object is. And we're going to choose multi-servo here. And we're going to click add a new servo. And now the servo that we want to control is his right shoulder. That's what we're going to use. And we can look in the list here. We can see that his right shoulder is connection to port D2. So I'll select D2, and I'm going to move his minimum position, say down to there, and his maximum position, say up to there. Now, if you're working with his left shoulder, he's going to, because the servo is reversed, his left is going to point up for minimal, and his top, his max, is going to point down, in which case you're going to want to push the invert button. That's the orientation of the servo. So we'll choose on the x-axis, multi-servo, and we'll click the add button. And we want to use his right upper shoulder here, right upper arm. So if we look in the list, 
we have here right upper arm, which is port D7. So let's select D7 from this list here. And let's select its minimum position. So minimum position is too far over there, so let's bring it back. Maybe, maybe there. And then let's bring his maximum position there. Now we're going to want to push the invert button because it's inverted. Right. All right. Now I'll push save. And save again. And now we hold the frog up. You see, now his arm is pointing towards the direction of the detected object as well. Getting a work out there. <laughs> yes, he is. So there you go. So you can do the exact same thing with Rolly by configuring his arms as well using multi-servos. And so we could also do it for the pink duck as well because we've stored these servo settings. So all the colors that we've trained him to recognize will also follow those movements. You got it. In this episode, we showed you how to teach your robot to detect and track different colors. We used Revolution JD, but any of the robots with a camera can be used. To start, power on your fully charged robot. Load the Easy Builder software and open the Bear project for your robot. The Bear project provides you with a nice clean workspace with minimal controls. This allows you to customize the workspace as needed. Connect to the robot using the Wi-Fi connection and click the blue connect button to initialize. From Project, add the camera device control and click Start to activate it. Choose an object of the color that you want to teach the robot. This could be something like a green frog or a duck that has pink on it. Click the Multicolor tab and edit the first color that you see. First thing you need to do is to provide a name for your new color. This is the name that your robot can later speak. So in our case, we decided to name our green color, Green Frog. You can choose any name for this variable. Use the color wheel to isolate the desired color. You want to back off the wheel until the color disappears and just return until you can see it again. You're also going to use the other sliders to narrow the accuracy. The more narrow the range is, the more accurate your robot can be when it's detecting the color. Remember that things like angle, white balance, and luminance can all impact the way your robot is detecting a color. If you have false positives, or your robot's not quite detecting your color under all circumstances, go back in and fine-tune these settings. Save these settings, and then continue to add other colors as needed. From the Tracking tab in the camera device, click on the Multicolor checkbox. When your robot detects the saved color, a box will appear around the object. The tracking value underneath the camera preview will indicate when your robot is tracking something. You can create a script that will have the robot speak the color that it detects. Click on the gear icon of the camera control and select Scripts. There are two options for scripts, Tracking Start and Tracking End. We want the script to execute when the robot begins tracking the saved color. Click on the pencil icon beside Tracking Start to enter the Blockly workspace. From Audio, add Say Easy B. Beside it, add the block Create Text With. Add the desired text such as I see a uh, or I see the color. Make sure to leave a space at the end because this text will be appended to the name of the color. Without the space, the color name will be added as part of the last word. From variable, add the variable called camera object color. This variable stores the name of the last detected color and updates as the robot tracks. The full string of text will be spoken as I see a green frog or I see the color pink when the saved color is detected. Robots with head servos, such as Rolly or JD, can follow the color with their heads. Click on the gear icon of the camera control and check the servo tracking box. Movement in the x-axis is controlled by the horizontal head servo, while movement in the y-axis is controlled by the vertical servo. Click to identify the ports that control these servos, such as D0 or D1. Slide to adjust the maximum and minimum range of movement values, avoiding any grinding noises. For the vertical servo, the default minimum value will be at the top of the range. To have the robot look up when an object is at the top of the camera view, the vertical settings must be inverted. We can also control additional servos, such as the arm servos, to have the robot point and follow the detected color. Select multi-servo and click add servo. Find the desired port to move the right shoulder in the y-axis and the right upper arm in the x-axis. Slide to adjust the minimum and maximum range value. The upper arm settings will also need to be inverted to compensate for the servo orientation. Save and test your servo settings. 
When the robot detects the saved color, it should speak the name and follow the tracked movement using both its head and right arm. Thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time. What factors may influence color detection accuracy? Which variable stores the given name of the color? Why do some servo settings need to be inverted? Find the answers at therobotprogram.com.